Hi and welcome to a beginner's guide for Dirt Rally 3. Uh, uh, wait, the name changed. Uh, I, I mean EA WRC, made by Codemasters. This will be a quick guide with 7 tips to improve your driving as a newcomer to the genre. If you have already played Dirt Rally 1 or 2 and have enjoyed it, then this video will probably not tell you anything new. But for all the others, let's get started with the first tip, identify. This game, EA's WRC, is a direct successor to Dirt Rally 2.0. This means it is focused on a realistic and authentic driving model. I call it a simulation. Wait, 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 wait with the pitchforks, okay? I know this is a very picky topic. Some like to think in black and white boxes, and for some this game certainly does not clear the bar for the simulation box. But for me, most things in life live on a spectrum, in shades of grey, between the extremes. Now, if we would say the most realistic driving game is maybe ACC, and the least realistic is Mario Kart Rainbow Bridge, yeah? Okay, then this WRC game is certainly very far on the realistic side of the spectrum. So, if you don't like games like Gran Turismo, Forza Motorsport, or the last WRC games, or always considered the Dirt series more fun than the Dirt Rally series, this game might also be a bit frustrating for you. Just to set an expectation of what you're getting into, okay? Second tip, listen to the notes. Your co-pilot is calling out what comes ahead. You shall learn to listen to those calls, and I mean to hear with your ears, not reading the symbols on the screen. The thing to do now, go into the options and turn off the symbols. Why? Because your brain can multitask easier if those tasks are on different senses. You need your eyes for driving, don't overload them with something else besides driving. Train your ears to be the only sense responsible for the co-pilot. This way your brain has a much easier time multitasking both things, to understand the cause while also driving the car. If you want to take this one step further, you can get a force feedback wheel, which lets you train your arms to feel what the front wheels are doing, rather than only relying on your eyes. The more you distribute the things to do between your sensory inputs, the easier it is to process them all. Tip number three. Too early. Now, on asphalt, you would try to drive smooth lines, like on rails. But on loose surfaces like gravel or snow, you got very little grip. There is a point when it becomes faster to slide through corners rather than to roll through them. But when sliding, you are steering in a different way. To initiate a slide, you start to turn while you are still on the straight bit of the road. But once in the slide, your steering input is very very small for keeping the angle good. This means on loose surfaces, your wheel, your steering wheel, turns actually before a corner but is often kept straight while you are in the corner. If you are only used to racing on asphalt so far, this requires some practice to get used to. Try to turn in earlier than you would normally do, and to try again and again to find the hang of it, how early before a corner you have to turn in on loose surface. The driving style on gravel is just different than on tarmac and requires practice. Fourth tip, mental road. As mentioned, you will train to hear your co-pilot's notes. 
To get really good, you can also try to separate these tasks even more. To drive the car on the current bit of road, but at the same time, build a mental road in your head that is always around two corners ahead of your uh, current location. Your listening will constantly build this mental road and your muscles and eyes drive according to what they expect from this mental road. With this technique, it will allow you to drive faster through corner combinations and to know what's ahead. Uh, give you an example like um, when you are doing a fast left turn followed immediately by a right hairpin In that case if you only realize that the hairpin is coming once you're exiting the fast turn Then it will be too late to break accordingly or be on the right line for the hairpin but if from very early co-pilot calls, you have built up your mental road, including the hairpin already, then your driving will know that there is a hairpin behind this corner and can prepare the entrance for the hairpin accordingly. Tip number five, risk management. Rally is a sport of variety. You will not drive the same corner ever so slightly better every lap. You will only drive hundreds of difficult corners once. And those corners have very little room for error. Therefore, it is a faster strategy in rally to drive defensively, rather than to drive everything at the absolute cutting edge. That one corner where you will be slightly above the limit and crash that will ruin your whole time for the event or even crash your car completely. Rally is a survival game. The winner is the fastest survivor, even if the dead have been faster. There is this saying, to finish first, you first have to finish. Remember that well. Now for tip 6, test the waters. There are many things that affect how much grip your car has and how unsettling it drives. Many of those are beyond your control, like the weather with the difference between sandy dust or slippery mud, or the degradation of the stage by other cars running before you, creating deep ruts to deal with. Or actually the opposite, when you are first in the running order and race across some deceivingly smooth dust-covered gravel. Or the time of day, letting the same corners shine in a different light and sometimes the sun blinding you. My point being that you cannot trust the road from an earlier stage, even if you are in the middle of a rally and have run a few stages already that doesn't directly translate to how much grip you can rely on in the next stage. This makes it beneficial to learn a driving style that is actually discouraged by circuit racers. Impulsive steering. On a track you learn to be as smooth as possible with your steering wheel. But in rallying it helps to steer in an impulsive manner at corner entry and especially at the start of a new stage with changed conditions. You test the waters of how much grip this mud or dirt actually has. At corner entry you have a lot of space to correct if the grip is less than you hoped for. I am talking about split seconds here, like two to three impulse impulsive steerings in a single corner entry. This helps you to quickly find a new rhythm for this current stage and to quickly drive at the new limit once the new grip levels are found. One exception for this tip might be Monte Carlo, where the surface changes during the stages. So the impulsive steering might be useful for in the middle or at the end of a stage too when you transition from tarmac to the yet unknown snow conditions, or vice versa. On to final number seven, the Zen factor. Rallying 
is in its core a test of your concentration. In circuit racing, you often got some long straight every lap where you just can mentally breathe for a moment, pedal to the metal, going just straight and then concentrate for the next lap. In rallying, this is not a thing. And this game has by far the longest stages ever in the Dirt Rally series. Yes, I still mentally see this as Dirt Rally 3. Whereas in the last game, you got about 11 kilometers as the longest stages. This time it is 30 kilometers on average. That is almost triple the time you need to drive those long stretches, requiring non stop concentration well over 20 minutes in duration. Most crashes happen because you got out of flow, out of touch with the nodes, or were distracted for a split second. That's why this tip is about your launch ritual. Focus deliberately. Don't just go into it, click, click, vroom, vroom, go. Instead, pause for a moment at the start and deliberately focus your mind. If you have any calming ritual, do it. You see many professional drivers do something similar at the start of a stage. Only once your mind is calm and focused, pull the handbrake and go for it, keeping the focus all stage long. And once you are done, same procedure, take a breath, pause, drink something and let your thoughts run free again, so that your Zen factor can be ready again when the next stage starts. And that's it for my 7 tips. I hope it was and will be helpful for you. Go try them out. And keep trying. The better you get at driving on the edge, the more addicting the rally driving becomes. Just like with Dirt Rally 2, I plan to create country guides for all the locations in EAWRC. So depending on you when you watch this, take a look if a country you struggle with is already covered on the channel. If not yet, I trust you know how YouTube works to get notifications. Now I wish you an awesome day and leave you with a quote from Kimi Raikkonen. Rallying is a lot harder than F1, certainly for me. If you can drive on some of the roads we did this year, you can drive anywhere.